Yeah, thank you so much for your time, Sarah. Look, whether we believe in little green men or not, let's consider that the universe is infinite. If one believes in evolution, is it not a mathematical certainty that there should be some sort of life somewhere in the universe, even if it's a tiny, tiny, tiny amoeba? Certainly that is my statistical opinion because we don't know if our universe has bounds. For all we know, it is completely infinite. There are about six trillion galaxies in our observable universe, each with about 100 billion stars. It is absolutely enormous. And statistically speaking, if we exist, if our solar system had the right circumstances and, and materials that we needed for life to to form, then that could happen elsewhere. So statistically, I think, yes, life would exist elsewhere. Would it be communicating with us or coming down in UFOs? I think that is a very, very slim chance. And I think it, we can have a little bit of confusion when we talk about the probabilities of life out there and then the probabilities of what would happen if it could communicate or visit us, I think, are two very different things. Yeah, OK, let's talk about possible intelligent life somewhere in the universe. If that civilization, let's call it, um, had the uh, uh, abilities that we have had as humans since maybe mm -hmm. the Industrial Revolution began, but they've been going for 25 million years. What sort of technology would that kind of outer space civilization need to visit Earth? So it is a really good question. And at this point, we are unsure. So assuming there is an intelligent species out there, way more intelligent than us and has technological advancements, let's assume that they can break physics and travel at the speed of light, which we don't think is possible. According to Einstein's E equals MC squared, it is not possible. But assuming they do, they would need to still travel tens, hundreds and thousands of light years to get from star system to star system. So our closest star system is about four and a bit light years away from us. And the majority of stars in our galaxy are tens of thousands of light years away from us. So I think even with those considerations, this interstellar travel would be remarkably hard. And it brings a good question that um, scientists have been asking for decades, one, one that is uh, outlined by something called the Fermi paradox, where if life is common in theory, where is it? Why don't we see signs of it? Why don't we hear radio signals from it? Uh, and that brings us to another point that maybe life is not as common as we think, or maybe there are great filters that happen along the way. And I think that is, is something interesting to think about. And it kind of gets you considering, well, if there are filters, so maybe life can only evolve to certain points, are we before the filter or are we after the filter? And both I think are very interesting and kind of humbling to think about. Do you think that most of uh, these sightings of UFOs, whether they're being investigated uh, by official authorities or whether it's eyewitness accounts of any everyday yeah. citizen, do you think most of them can be explained, if not all of them, just by natural phenomenon and militaries around the world not admitting how advanced their tech is? I think there's a very good chance that the majority of, of these objects that have been cited are natural or human-made phenomenon or even sensor uh, technology uh, errors or anomalies within the devices that detect them. I would say that it would be statistically very slim that any of these would be from uh, little green men trying to make contact, which wouldn't that be wonderful if our universe is teeming with friendly things. But unfortunately, and I think probably the more interesting Thing is that it is probably natural or human made and if if that's the case we want to know what is happening because our skies we want to be able to track our traffic within our sky and also within space to make sure that when we're sending anything within those domains we do so safely. Sarah really appreciate the time thank you so much indeed Sarah Webb in Melbourne Australia.